All right, welcome back to the channel. So the drama continues in one of the hottest weight classes in boxing, the lightweight division between two of the top guys there, Gervonta Davis and Tiafimo Lopez. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez says Gervonta Davis fights bums and mismatches, and he is fooling the media and the critics. Maybe so, Tiafimo, but maybe you should get to fooling them too. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So before I do this video, get into this, I got to give a special shout out to my man, Quest X. He's a member of the LDBC, did a video <laughs> that said, Tiafimo Lopez is acting, starting to sound like Keith Thurman. And I swear, dude, I, I didn't have the time to watch the whole video. I asked you guys to go look for it and check it out. But man, when I read that title, I started busting up laughing because that is exactly, exactly what Tiafimo Lopez is out here doing acting like Keith one-time Thurman after Errol Spence Jr. had already made his presence known, was already one of the hottest fighters in the welterweight division, really was the hottest fighter in the welterweight division, even though he didn't, even though he didn't have a belt. But, T, but there was Keith Thurman sitting with his two belts on his shoulder, and sitting there with his two belts on his shoulder, acting like he was the star. Talking about, yeah, maybe one of these days when Young Buck gets up there, yeah, then we can fight. Slowly but surely, Keith Thurman, because he was, because his, uh, his, his observation about what the welterweight boxing scene was was so radically different than what most other people's were that he wound up becoming an embarrassment to his own self, right? <laughs> Where, dude, there was so many Keith Thurman fans that just disappeared off the map because Keith Thurman just kept ducking, ducking and ducking and ducking till it just became obvious, dude, that you don't want Errol Spence Jr. And even now he's calling out Errol Spence Jr. and all that. And I still don't know if he's even halfway serious. Or maybe he's just hoping that Errol Spence Jr.'s accident, you know, really did have an effect on him. But regardless, that's the story of Keith Thurman. And that, story, and that is becoming the story of, of Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo Lopez has a skewed view of his place in the world of boxing. And that's reasonable because he works, because he fights for a company that is so much about smoke and mirrors. You remember when Errol Spence Jr. was on the podium uh, talking about Terrence Crawford? It was after the Mikey Garcia fight. No, excuse me. It was after the Sean Porter, Danny Garcia fight. And Errol Spence Jr., who was the IBF champion, was sitting there trying to call out uh, Sean Porter to get a fight even though he was already the IBF champion and, and they were fighting for a vacant belt. Ter Errol Spence went there like, whoever wins this fight, I want that fight next. And then he wound up going, you know, he wound up going, uh, going to get it. Tiafimo Lopez is just living in this world, dude, where um, he doesn't know that Gervonta Tank Davis has already arrived. Let me make the segue that way. Gervonta Davis is already arrived. So when Tiafimo Lopez says, you know, that Gervonta Davis is fighting, he also said the same thing about Devin Haney, right? He says that, um, you know, Gervonta Davis is just fighting mismatches. He's got the, he's got the fans fooled. He's got the critics fooled. They need to fight real competition. But if you look at Gervonta Davis's resume and you look at Tiafimo Lopez, it's Gervonta Davis that should say that about Tiafimo Lopez not the other way around, okay? Because Tiafimo Lopez has exactly one guy on his entire resume, and that is Vasily Lomachenko. And Vasily Lomachenko was a hype job to begin with, who already lost to Orlando Salido. Already lost to Orlando Salido and never rematched Orlando Salido. So the fact that you beat him, dude, everybody knew you were going to beat him going in there. You're a welterweight, and he's a 130-pounder. There's literally weight classes between the two of you, and you still was getting thumped by Vasily Lomachenko. So, yeah, hit the pause on that. Because Gervonta Davis also just got done beating with a four, a four division world champion in Leo Santa Cruz, a guy like Tief, like Vasily Lomachenko, only had one loss. What's the difference between Vasily Lomachenko and Tief, and Vasily Lomachenko and uh, Leo Santa Cruz? Leo Santa Cruz fought better competition. And he had more wins, he had more championship fights, all of the above. 
Okay, the only difference was he didn't have ESPN and Teddy Atlas screaming about how great they, uh, great he is at the top of their lungs. Because truth be told, that's the only reason anybody ever was really. Now I'm not saying that's the only reason people were impressed with Vasily Lomachenko because he really, really is a tremendous, tremendous fighter. But the best since Ali on the Pernell Whitaker level, on the Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, level, no, he was never that. That was a Bob Arum hype job. And, and when he got old, he fed him to Tiafimo Lopez, and Tiafimo Lopez moves on. That is not the story with Javante Davis, okay? Javante Davis has beaten, you know, he beat Jose Pedraza, who went the distance with Lomachenko, and beat him way better than Lomachenko did, okay? Got him up out of there. Vasily Lomachenko didn't get him up out of there, okay? Completely outclassed Jose Pedraza in a gross mismatch. But that doesn't mean that Jose Pedraza can't fight because Jose Pedraza moved up in weight and beat Ray Beltran to win the champion. To win a ch- oh, who did he beat? Yeah, I think he did. I think he beat Ray Beltran to win the WBO belt. It's amazing how Ray Beltran keeps getting championship shots too because Ray Beltran, despite the fact that he was shot, do believe that he got an IBF shot against Comey, <laughs> which wound up being the guy that Tiafimo Lopez beat. You know, to um, you know, to get his belt. So I mean, with top rank, it's just it's a bunch of manufacturing, a bunch of a bunch of mismatches. Not yeah, well, really, with top rank, yeah, it's a bunch of mismatches. But what I meant is a bunch of in-house orchestrated fights. So, dude, that is really called that is really calling mud calling dirt dirty when you're when when um, Tiafimo Lopez talk about Javante Davis and saying what his competition level is because Javante Davis has fought a higher level competition than Tiafimo Lopez has. And he's done it in multiple weight classes. But um, there's another issue here. And it's that Tiafimo Lopez also said the same thing about Devin Haney. And that is even more amazing. Because you duck Devin Haney. Devin Haney's not fought the top competition because the guy that you fought wouldn't fight him. Did you miss that, Tiafimo Lopez? Did you miss it? Vasily Lomachenko had him. He was the WBA champion, the WBC champion, excuse me, sitting there minding his own business. And then Devin Haney becomes the mandatory. Now, I also do believe that he became the mandatory because there was supposed to be a WBC tournament in which Tiafimo Lopez refused to participate. And why do we now see that he refused to participate? Because Bob Arum had another end around for him to wind up with the belts without having to go through that tournament. Same way they did Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez was also supposed to be in a WBC tournament. But what happened to the WBC tournament that Jose Ramirez was in? Once Jose Ramirez beat Amir Imam, the whole tournament just disappeared. Magically, the WBC forgot they were having it. Bob Arum said he wasn't participating in it. Regis Prograde never got the shot, even though he did everything he was supposed to do to get that shot. But what did Bob Arum do? He just straight up cut off the tournament. Now Jose Ramirez is the WBC champion. And what did Regis Prograde have to do? Regis Prograde has to go all the way over to the Scotland and fight a very close fight with Josh Taylor, swell his eye up like that, and lose by one scorecard. Because one ref... Gave a 12th round to hope to Josh Taylor and ain't no way in the world that he deserved that. However, you knew that was a harder route as soon as Regis Progre had to go over there to the UK to train. And, Re- and Josh Taylor is sitting there at home chaining in his own backyard. Wow, what a change of events, right? I'm sure Tiafimo Lopez, and that's what Tiafimo Lopez and Bob Miram did with Devin Haney. So the idea that you're going to turn around, that is like Jose Ramirez turning around and saying Regis Progre ain't fought nobody. Yeah, Jose Ramirez, well, he did fight. He fought Josh Taylor, but if he hadn't, yeah, Jose, he didn't fight him because you wouldn't fight him. And that's one of the things that 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 just keeps happening in boxing. A guy ducks somebody and then says the guy that he's ducking ain't fought nobody when he knows perfectly well what the problem is. The problem is, just like Sean Porter in a great moment of honesty said about Jerron Ennis. He looked at Jerron Ennis and was like, nah, not me. No, not me. Not fighting Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis is way too much right now for uh for somebody like me. <laughs> now, because I don't want to have to fight these young lion guns type dudes. 
I'm fighting the guys that are around my age, around my experience level. And if Jerron fights himself up there and gets to where I have to fight him, then I'll fight him. But you're going to have to force me to do that. And that's what Sean Porter said. Great honesty. And that's and everybody knows that. Same thing going with Tiafimo Lopez and why he doesn't want to fight Devin Haney. Same thing. You don't want to fight that dude because you know you got a chance of losing. Tiafimo Lopez also has a chance to win, chance of winning, but he's got a chance of losing, and that's why he don't want that fight. Or at least that's why Bob Arum doesn't want him to have that fight. And Tiafimo Lopez is going to do what Bob Arum tells him to do. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. I cannot wait for this fight tonight. You let me know what you think in the comment section. I will see you for the Terrence Crawford versus Kell Brook fight. And with that, I'm out. Peace.